Hello Tiger fans and welcome to Tiger TV. This is Mike White with Coach's Talk with Coach Justin Cruz, head football coach of the Ripley High School Tigers. Coach, thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Coach, uh, man, we lost a heartbreaker last last Friday night. Uh, you know, went down to double overtime. Everybody in the stands was on their feet. I mean, it was an exciting game and obviously went down to the last, last play of the game. Yeah, it was a little too exciting for me. Uh, you know, I take anything away from Union City. I felt like we were the better team. Um, but like we tell the boys every time we play a game, it's not the better team that always wins. So, you know, they, they come out and outplay you. You know, they play hard and you just want it more. Uh, and they can take a game away from you. And at times I felt like they did that to us the other night. Um, you know, offensively, I, I thought we did a pretty good job. Anytime you put up 42 points in a game, you should win it. Um, defensively is where I felt like we really lacked the other night. And a couple special teams blunders. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to win games when you're only being really successful with one-third of the game. You know, the other two are really lacking. So... Um, you know, I could go through a ton of reasons why I believe that is. I thought we got a little lazy at times up front on the defensive side. You know, I felt like linebackers was missing some assignments and, and plugging the wrong holes. And uh, just wasn't a very good game overall defensively. We had our moments, you know, that I think that's what gave me some confidence going to the second half is, you know, we had moments where we really stood up and stopped them and forced them to punt and turnovers. And, you know, I really felt good about going to the second half. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten that last drive back and at least come away with a field goal uh, before half, but, you know, uh, for various reasons, we didn't do, get any points out of that. But second half, I just really felt like their offense wanted it more than our defense wanted to stop them. And, um, and even in overtime, you know, I think they wanted a little more um, than our defense wanted because we had our chance to stop them there on the fourth and, you know, two from the you know, goal or whatever, and they kind of ended up scoring. Um, unfortunately, a, a bad snap exchange on an extra point was the difference in the game for us uh, in that moment. But um, as I tell the kids all the time, there's not one play that defines the game. You know, we did stuff before that to lose that game. You know, a, a freshman, you know, was snapping, and, you know, he's doing the best he can, made a little issue, exchange, or whatever. And uh, Jack tried to make a play with it. But unfortunately, we just didn't get undone. Uh, you know, there was a lot of people that thought I'd have went for two there. But uh, if anybody that was paying attention that, that I guess would know what to look for, it would notice there should be somebody going out and pattern if we're going to fake it. Um, you know, I would definitely wouldn't let Jack just run that. And also, you know, if I was going to go for two, I would have probably handed it to number three and we'd have won or lost it with him, uh, you know, on the line. So, uh, but, you know, it is what it is, you know, and I know people were very passionate about the game, and I appreciate that because that means that people were starting to love football a little more and getting into it a little more. So, you know, that's what you want as a, a football program and you want your community to be supporting behind you and, and really be into what you're doing. So. It's just unfortunate we lost. I thought the kids played pretty hard for the most part. I just, I think our execution and want to let us down at times, and uh, we just got to be better. Well, and and the referees didn't help. I mean, I'm not going to put it on the referees. Like you said, 
uh, and like I've heard you say before, uh, you know, the referees shouldn't be able to make you win or lose a game. You know, if you play well enough, it won't come down to the referees. But, uh, you know, they didn't do us any favors, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, you can go back. There's some calls there. She must say it was tacky or, you know, that should have been called that wasn't. Um, but, again, I, there's not one moment that I thought that they changed the game or anything like that. You know, they could have helped us uh, in some cases if it, they'd called a player so, so here and there. But it doesn't mean that points would have resulted because of it or, or vice versa taken off the board. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. The refs, I guess they're doing the best they can. You know, I keep telling you that every week. You know, we're all human. Um, we all mess up. But um, I'm grateful that we have them because I know there's a shortage right now. So we should have to take care of the ones we still got so we can keep playing um, and not have to start playing on Thursday nights or Saturdays and all that good noise. But, uh, yeah, I, again, I don't, I don't think that that was – necessarily a, a change in the outcome of the game what they did but you know at the end of the day we just got to play better defensively especially when your offense is is doing as well as they are and you know controlling the game up front like I thought they did a pretty good job of that most of the night we had our, our miscues but for the most part with some guys out one night I thought some kids played really well offensively and um you talk about a kid like Danelle Barbie who you know is a senior you know had, he's kind of had a role all year he's kind of stepping up bigger in these moments he had 94 yards and a touchdown the other night and Jordan Glass Ended up having two touchdowns the other night. And, you know, of course, Terrence Taylor's been doing it all year. Um, but that old line, you know, like I said, they're young and they're, I feel like they're getting better. Um, we still mess up. But I thought the offense, like I said, did their job the other night. We just let them down in some other areas. And, and we've worked on a lot this week. So we're looking to be better this week. And, you know, we had talked a little bit about, you know, of course, them running the triple option and, you know, responsibility football. And, you know, sometimes, you know, a lot of times we did a good job of covering all of them, but they did a good job of picking it out when we did. Oh, that's 100%. You know, I, again, it's all about doing your job. It's pretty much, you, know, you said it, you know, you alluded to it. But, um, you know, we just, I think sometimes got caught trying to do someone else's and, you know, got caught lacking a little bit. Those guys would come off the ball low and hard, and they rooted us out of there a few times. And, uh, like I said, I thought we was going to come up with a stop there at the end to win it for us. You know, I had a lot of confidence in our D-line and our defense in general. But, unfortunately, you know, we just fell about a half yard uh, the wrong way, and, you know, it ended up being their game. Well, you know, they say it's a, it's a game of inches, and, you know, and a lot of times it is on the field as it was then, but uh, some of the coaches I've heard say, and, and actually got to go back to uh, to Clint, he used to say it's a game of inches, and uh, it's six inches, it's six inches between your ears. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you know, our mind plays tricks on us, so you're probably right about that, and they probably saw some stuff that they thought they didn't really see, but they thought in their mind, hey, if I can do this, I can, I can end this game, and it actually kind of got us out of position, so... I, I don't ever fault kids for playing hard. You know, I, again, I thought a lot of them played really hard. Um, it's just, you know, got to be more disciplined. You know, we, we had too many, you know, offsides penalties the other night. I, I didn't understand that. There wasn't nothing that I thought they were doing crazy to draw us offsides. It just, I don't know, the game got away from us a little bit in, in that regard and discipline and um, obviously also with the responsibilities. And, and I don't know, uh, of course, I'm not close enough to hear. I don't know if they did hard snap counts, but I know quarterback kept using a hard head bob. You know, and it seemed like maybe sometimes we were watching that head bob. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the down down linemen are not supposed to be able to see that, but maybe the linebacker or some of the other ones were watching that head bob. And uh, I just thought that was something. It was something different that I hadn't seen this year. And I don't know if it played into it or not, but uh, that was just one thing that I noticed. But uh, changing gears, of course, we will be taking on uh, Millington in a region game tonight. Uh, last week was a game we wanted to win. This is a game we need to win. Yeah, anytime you say region game, it's a it's a different kind of mindset. You know, it should be. I mean, any game you want to win, definitely. But uh, region games are almost half two wins, especially this bigger region. Um, you got to win a certain amount of games to get in the playoffs. And our goal is always to get in the playoffs and make runs. You know, whatever we do in the regular season, we find a way in the playoffs. And, you know, you get the dance, you got a chance. That's what we always tell the kids. So, uh, yeah, it, it's huge. I, you know, watch the Millington on film, they're going to come out and play hard. They always do. Coach Michaels down at Millington is a good coach and a good guy. Uh, he does a great job of, of coaching his kids up and getting the most out of them. So we're going to be on our P's and Q's. You know, they're going to pass a lot more than we've seen last couple weeks, and uh, they're going to be more balanced offensively. They'll still run it. Um, they got a good quarterback. He's young, but I, I think he's improving vastly from, from where we saw him last year as a freshman. Um, so, we, you know, we're going to have to really tighten up on defense and um, play and, and defend the entire field. So you, you mentioned that they will throw the ball more than uh, we're used to, but uh, what, what kind of offensive schemes or formations or what, what will they actually line up in? 
they like to spread. Um, they, they keep a wing in a lot of times, but they're they're spread team, you know, four wide pretty much. Um, that that guy that's the wing is like an H back type, you know, he kind of moves around and whatnot. Uh, but they're gonna throw flood routes, you know, they're gonna get vertical. They're gonna try to catch you on some post wheels, some slow go routes, fast screens, really make you defend the perimeter. And then they're also gonna try to inside zone you and counter you inside. And quarterback's gonna read and whatnot. So. Like I said, they're doing a good job of, of keeping you out of balance because you can't just key on one person and say, take this guy away, you know, and the game's different because I think he tries to get a, a lot of kids involved. And uh, it, it does put you in a bind sometimes, but at the end of the day, I, I think it comes down to just winning the box. You know, if you're staying in the quarterback's lap and, you know, you're taking away the run, uh, you, you force them to be one-dimensional at that point. And, um, and it's really hard to throw when, you know, defensive linemen are in your lap linebackers. So that's kind of our goal this week is, you know, get a lot of penetration live in the backfield really cause a lot of problems for a younger quarterback um, and obviously mess up their run schemes with penetration. Um, offensively, it, it's pretty much who we are. You know, let's control the football. Let's run the football. Um, we've kind of started to develop a little bit of a pass game the last couple weeks. Um, we've been uh, trying to be more diverse. That way we can, you know, stay a little more balanced. People can't load the box on us. And Jack's doing a pretty good job in the receivers. You know, last week we went without an interception uh, on offense, which is good for us. And, um, and we still end up with over 100 yards passing. And, in our scheme, that's a pretty good job. So um, I think, again, just got to take care of the football and play good defense and obviously clean up some of our special teams' mistakes, and, and I think we'll be fine. Uh, do you anticipate uh, in trying to put pressure on the quarterback, you know, maybe doing a lot of blitzing or uh, more than usual, or you just kind of throw it in there when you feel like you need it? Well, I, I think that we're, we blitz a lot when it comes to spread teams, but it's all calculated. It's about run fits. Uh, we don't want to blitz ourselves out of a play, per se, but – yeah, I think we definitely bring more pressure this week than, than previous weeks. Uh, previous weeks you blitz and you, you run yourself out of place due to the options and underneath stuff that Covington did as well. Uh, but this one kind of opens up a little more. You kind of got more space to let your athletes run and kind of cause problems with them moving around, slant, and all that good noise in the, in the front. So uh, it, it's going to be fun. You know, I, I think the kids enjoy when we do that. You know, it gives them a chance to make a big play, but it also causes a little chaos for the other team because you don't really know, you know who you got to block right here. They get out of position, and then before you know it, you got a big play on defense. And so, definitely, I think we'll be more aggressive this week. Defensively, for them, what uh, what type of defense do they line up in? They're a three-four team. Um, some people call it the uh, the fifty, but you know it's three-four. Everybody evolves to that now, uh, where you got those outside linebackers can play like defensive ends, or also can drop into coverage. Um, so that's that's kind of what they're doing. And um, you know, we we kind of like going against three-four because it opens up some natural running lanes, especially with our wing tee. So we're going to try to exploit that, but. They, they pretty much are true to 3-4. Well, Coach, I uh, want to wish you the very best of luck and want to wish uh, want to come out. We're going to be 1-0 this week and uh, uh, go toward the, uh, the region, uh, move up in the region as we you know go into the last half of the season. Uh, so good luck and hope everybody comes out and watches the football game. It'll be a great game in Millington. And, uh, again, thanks for being with us, Coach, and we'll see you on the sideline. Thank you. Got on it, so Millington will start off on offense. It'll be first down and 10 around the 34 yard line. And so we'll see what the Tigers have and what the Trojans have. That's right. We need to come out of this and uh, get them off the field as quick as we can and come and uh, get the ball and get it down the field. And, go. and they do start out in the spread. They'll have, uh, of course, the shotgun formation. They'll have two wide to the left, one to the right. For the first down and hit and stays on his feet and crawls as he gets across the 50 yard line. So, about a 16 yard pickup, 17 yard pickup on first down. I didn't see who made the tackle there. Did you? No, uh, but, that, but it was number seven for Millington, Jonathan uh, Temple Dowdy. I mean, excuse me, uh, So, the Tigers have got to put some pressure on that quarterback and they've got to do some covering because they're going to be the throwing the ball around all night. Here's another snap. This time to hand it off the running back going left the middle. He got to the linebacker level, picked up around five. He'll be across the 45 down to the 44 yard line for the Tigers. We're going to bring up second down in around five. Yeah, that was a uh, turn of crowd that made that stop on that play. Millington up to the line, same formation to hand the ball again, going off the left side. Uh, Crowder, first one there. 
And uh, Carney in on the tackle as well, a pickup of a couple. So it'll bring up third down in around two or three for the Trojans. Great job so far by the uh, Tiger defense. Good job by Turner Crabber on that stop. Two wide right, one to the left, wing to the left. Running back to the quarterback's right. Tried to pull the Tigers off, didn't work. Change of play. Here's the ball. Quarterback keeps it himself going off the right side. He's got the first down. He's going to be brought out of bounds, but not until he picks up the first down. The tackle made by number 20 for the Tigers brings him down, and that would be Kobe Maynard. But it does move the stick, so it'll be first down 10, Millington. And that quarterback is off for for the coach. Mike, he's a good looking, good looking quarterback for the coach. Millington right back up to the line of scrimmage. They run pretty much no huddle. They wear the wristbands to keep, the, they get a signal from the sideline and look at their wristbands and uh, make sure they're all on the same page. Two wide, right, man in motion, right to left. They had, trying to get outside, number 19, he gets the edge, and he is knocked out of bounds, but not until he gets another first down, picks up around 11 or 12. Tiger defense giving up way too much. Yeah, number 19, Derek Haley, he's a so far they've hurt us more on the ground than they have in the air. The Tiger defense is definitely going to have to step up. Two wide right. One to the left. Wing to the right. Man in motion right to left. And the quarterback's just going to keep it himself, trying to get outside. He does get the edge, and uh, going down the far sideline for a pickup of around five or six. So, again, the Tigers giving up way too many chunks of yardage here early in this game. This is the first drive of the game. 9.50 to go in the first quarter. There's no score. Yeah, number three, uh, T.J. Elder took a pretty hard bounce over on that beautiful side. Took a pretty side. I want to remind everybody watching tonight that uh, – the camera is actually set up on the opposite side from where we are, so you have a little bit different angle than we do. Sometimes you'll see better, and sometimes we will. Here's the snap. They hand to the running back trying to get outside, and he cuts it back in. A good stop there made by Crowder. Him and uh, number 29 for the Tigers, Taylor, uh, Taylor Markham, in on the tackle, or I think he lost about a yard or two, so it'll bring up third down to round seven for the Trojans at the, about the 23, 22-yard line. Third down, seven. Two wide right, one to the left. Man in motion. They hand the ball to the man in motion, trying to get outside. He cuts it in, then back out. And good job by Edler as he slings him down. Hope that's not a penalty. Uh, he doesn't see a flag come out, so it'll be fourth down now for Millington as the Tigers bend but do not break on this opening drive. It'll be interesting to see if uh, they lose about a yard on the play. So let's see. I don't see any substitutions. So it appears that Millington will be going for it. They're, they're in fourth down territory, and I don't know if they got a guy with a leg that strong, and they may have had the team kick. Two wide left, one to the right, wing to the right. Still in shotgun. Man in motion. And the quarterback looking to throw. He's got a man over the middle. He overthrows him. And so it falls incomplete. The Tigers Huge will take over on down. They'll have it now. First down and 10 from the Trojan 23-yard line. You know, good stop by the Tiger defense, Michael, uh, to get this ball back. And I failed to mention that kickoff was a Farm Bureau kickoff. Go see all the AE of the agents at Farm Bureau and kick off your savings on insurance. Thank you to Farm Bureau for sponsoring the kickoffs. Millington will Ripley will break the huddle. Now we've got a, a backup center in this week, uh, big guy, but he's uh, and he snaps a lot, but he hasn't he's not hasn't been the starter to this game. Quarterback takes a snap, he hands it off to the running back going off the left side. He breaks into the linebacker level and across the 30 out to around the 31. So we pick up a round seven, should be second and three for the Tigers. At number 17 for the Tigers, that is Octavian Thomas. He is a junior for the Tigers. So he spotted down at the 31, so it'll be second down to round three. 
Ripley comes down the huddle with wide out to the right. Wing right, oh, excuse me, wing left. And the ball is running back again, going off the left side. And he's, he fights and he gets a yard or two, but he doesn't get much. Not enough for the first down, I don't think. It'll be close. 14, JT Calvero on the carry. Yeah, they say it was a first down, so that'll move the sticks. And so that is a discount home solutions, Clint Conrad first down. For those of you who have that name sounds familiar, Clint Conrad was one of the ace pitchers for the 2003 state championship baseball team in Ripley. Wide left, wing left. Now the wing and the tight end switch ends, switch sides. Hart hands the ball off number 27, trying to get outside, and he fights. He looked like he was going to be caught in the backfield, but he winds up picking up about four or five out to the 40-yard line. And he did a good job of eluding the tackle in the backfield, and they're going to spot him down at the at the 39 yard line. So pick up uh, four, it'll be second down six. Don L. Barber, number 27, senior for the Tigers that made that tough run. Wide left, wing left. Arn Anderson takes a tap. He hands it off to the running back trying to get up the middle. He's tripped up. <coughs> Stays on his feet. Excuse me. He picks up a couple. That was 24. So it'll make it now second down and a long three for the Tigers. This is the first offensive drive for Ripley. Wing right, wide left. Wing in motion, switches sides. That's Crowder and Flag comes out before the play starts. It's going to be a procedure call against Ripley. So that'll back them up five instead of being third and three. It's going to be third and eight. And I didn't see anybody move. I'm not sure if they didn't think that, uh, well, if they didn't snap the ball, so it couldn't have been how long it was set. So I'm not sure exactly what that was. Maybe they had two men in motion at the same time. I don't know. I was At any rate, it'll be third down and eight for Ripley at the 32-yard line. They're on 32. Wide left, wing right, and the ball to Edler trying to get outside on the right side. They're going to spring him out, and he's going to lose back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to make it fourth down and ten. Edler has that speed, but he just couldn't get uh, couldn't get north and south. And the Tigers are actually going from the south from the north to the south. Uh, it from right to left. And again, you may be looking at this right the opposite from me, because if you're looking at it instead of listening to it, because uh, again the uh, camera's on the opposite side of the field, so things may. May, my, what I say may not match up exactly. The Tigers ready for a punt, and the, the high snap, but they get it off, and it's going to take a good bounce for the Tigers, and they field it. I'm surprised, but they get it at the, about the 32-yard line, and that's where Millington will go back to work. Still no score. 4.56 to go first quarter. Millington zero, Ripley zero. Yeah, that penalty really hurt us, Mike. Back. Third and eight, Millington zero, We'll get it, folks. We'll get it. Also, again, I want to give a shout out to uh, Jimmy Kiesler. He's always at the games if he's able, and same thing with Mr. Jimmy Hill. Appreciate their long, long, long time support. Wide left, wing left. Oh no! no. And head up the middle, and he breaks into the linebacker level and picks up oh, around four. On the pickup, we'll see they spot the ball at the 36. So it looks like it will be second down and five, a five-yard pickup on that first down play. Wide outs to either side, wing right, shotgun formation. They hand the ball to the lone running back, and he's brought he's down gone. right at the line of scrimmage. So it'll bring up Six, third down and around. He might have picked up a yard. They say he does, so third down and four. Down Another four. big third down for the Tigers. They can get the ball back in good field position if they can hold them here and make them pump. Two wide right, one to the left, wing to the left. And they hand the ball to the running back, and he's hit in the backfield, number 28, and... That's number six carrying that ball for the Number 28 was one of the first one on the tackle. That was Chris 
Arthur Bridge, I believe is the way it's pronounced. So Millington will send in their punt team. It's going to be fourth down and four back at their own 37. Hunter stands at around his 24-yard line. Edler back deep for the Tigers. Three minutes and 28 seconds to go, first quarter, no score. Ripley versus Millington in Millington. Here's the snap, high snap, it goes over the, over the punter's head and Ripley is gonna hit him. And oh man, he took a lick and Ripley's gonna have the ball at about the six yard line. And let's see, there's two or three different spots. It looks like they're gonna have it at about maybe the seven. But Ripley on a bad punt snap gets the ball. Millington snapped it over the punter's head. He went back to pick it up and we did. I couldn't see who hit him, but he took a lick. So Ripley in great field position and now. They're knocking at the door inside the 10 at around, looks like they've got it spotted at the eight yard line. So it'll be first and goal from the eight with 309 to go first quarter, no score. Ripley breaks the huddle. First and goal, Ripley from the eight yard line. Wing right. Nobody wide. Running play. They hand the ball up the middle and not much. He did fight. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage. He fights for it for maybe a yard. Of course, you know we're playing without uh, 14, uh, without Pitts, number 41, our big fullback. That uh, you know that would typically be where he would run the ball. So you know we're trying to fill in without uh, without him being back there. But he'll be back our next game. We should be. That's the plans as of now. So Ripley, second down, goal to go from the seven. Wing left. And the ball to number 14. He's trying to break it outside, but he, he stays on his feet and fights and fights and probably picks up a yard at the most. Uh, so it's going to bring up third down around five or six, depending on the spot. We're bringing in Edward, TJ. TJ's got off from uh, Tennessee. Well, he's, he's, he's been, I don't know if they've actually officially offered him, but he's been on official business. No game on the play, third down goal. So it'll be third seven. and goal from around the six yard line. You know, this wet field is hard to get outside. And they hand the ball to Edler trying to get outside. He breaks it back to the middle and he goes into the end zone for a Tiger touchdown with 151 to go in the first quarter. Ripley draws first blood. That was a bank Tennessee Tiger touchdown. One twenty-five dollars go to the Ripley football program for every touchdown scored by Bank Tennessee. Great job by here. We'll get that ball in the end zone. Always. Earn is back to hold. And Hendricks to attempt the PAT. So with their timeout, we'll take a 30-second timeout and be back right after this. One fifty-one to go in the first. Ripley up six to zero as we get ready to attempt the PAT. Here's the hold, the snap is up, and it is good. So at the 151 mark in the first quarter, Ripley takes an early lead, seven to zero, as we get ready for the kickoff. Want to take an opportunity to thank all of our sponsors. Bank of Ripley, Quality Service, Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware, Farm Bureau Insurance, Star Physical Therapy, Dan Douglas Attorney at Law, Discount Home Solutions, McDonald's of Ripley, Christian Family Medicine, Nessa Suites, Ripley Church of God, Hutcherson Chapel Church of God, CSC Renovation, Thornton's Furniture, BR Supply, Taco vs. Sushi, Ripley Power and Light, Canales Body Shop, Greenbridge Insurance and Investments, Hendron Construction, and Mills Food Plaza. Also, I want to mention that last night I actually did an interview with Robert Rooks, who is the grandson of Tiny Knee, our stadium's namesake. And uh, got a lot of history about Tiny Knee. That's what the whole interview was about. So just a little teaser to be listening uh, sometime in the near future, probably sometime next week. 
Uh, we'll be airing that, and then we've got some other ones coming down the pipe. Uh, trying to pass along some of the old history uh, to some of the younger folks and, uh, you know, so that the history doesn't die out. Hendricks will set up on the hash mark closest to Millington side. Here's the kick. It's going to be a squibber again. It's going to be taken and just fall on at the 39-yard line. So that's where Millington will go to work again, first down and 10. And again, that was a Farm Bureau kickoff. Go see Andrew, Cynthia, Suzanne, and the rest of the game at Farm Bureau. Kick off your insurance savings with Farm Bureau. I got the score of interest. The Peabody 14 called nothing. 151 still on the clock. Two wide right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, wing left. And it's going to be a pass. He's looking. He's got a man coming over the middle. And a good job there breaking it up. Number 12 for the Tigers comes in. That's this. And knocks that ball down. He had a man that, that uh, looked like he came open, but Theus kind of reached around him and was able to knock that ball down and did a fantastic job of defending on that play. So it'll bring up second down team. Yeah, the quarterback of the trophy took a pretty hard hit. I don't... I don't Remember what guy was for Tiger You know, we talked about this this quarterback. Back when he was fresh, he was a great quarterback. Two wide right, one to the left, wing to the right. And they hand the ball going up the middle. And not much doing. The Tiger defense is stiffened up. They give up about a yard. It'll bring up third down and nine for the Trojans with 133 to go opening quarter. Ripley on top, 7-0. At any rate, be sure to uh, tune in and uh, get some very interesting facts about Tiny D. Uh, I knew a lot about him, but I didn't know I didn't know much compared to what I found out. So a very interesting fellow. Did a whole lot for Ripley and high school and athletics in general. Here's a snap. Quarterback wants to throw, rolling to his left, being chased, and he's hit, and he throws the ball over. Throws his intended receiver, overthrows one and underthrows the other. But it will bring up now fourth down and eight for the Trojans. It puts them back in punt situation again. Yeah, the intended uh, receiver was number seven, Jonathan Kevin Dowdy. He's a, he's a uh, sophomore. And before tonight, Taylor Carney uh, still leading the state in tackles. I think he had 95 so far in six games. And he is number six or seven in the nation and number one in the state of Tennessee. And they're going to do a quick kick, and they get it off. Ripley's just going to let it hit and roll, and it does take a Millington roll down inside the 25 to around the 23-yard line. So Ripley will go back on offense at their own 23-yard line with 53 seconds to go in the first. Is Carney, what is he, a senior? Junior. Junior. We got him another year then. He's, uh, he, like uh, Jack Kern, I think both of them have a 4.0, or at least both of them are in the – lead or in the running to be valedictorian and if things stay the way they are we should have a valedictorian on the football team each of the next three years this year and the two following ripley will break the huddle they'll send wide out to the left wing to the wing to the right and the ball running back going right up the middle and he does a good job of fighting forward and he was hit pretty quickly but he Keeps those legs churning and gets out across the 20. Was it a fumble on the play? It looks like it was. So Millington gets the Ripley turnover. We will pay the favor. So Millington will go back on offense, and they'll have the ball in good field position as it'll be around the 27-yard line. Millington will have it first down and 10. And, of course, first tonight it doesn't appear to be raining or raining much now, but it's been raining for a while. The field's wet, therefore the ball is wet. Billington to the line, two wide out to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, hand the ball to the running back. Now the quarterback keeps it. He's trying to get outside. Number uh, Carney, I believe, somebody grabbed his jersey and slowed it down. Yeah, that was number 29 for the Tigers. Markham that slowed it down, but he still picked up around, around four. So it'll be second down six for Millington. Probably one more play left in this quarter down to 19 seconds. Two wide left, one to the right. They hand the ball to running back number four, and he is hit and wrapped up for a short game. 
period of a, a gain of about two or three. So it's uh, going to be the last play of the first quarter. And let's see where they spot it. Based on where they spot it, it looks like it's going to bring up third down and around four. But at the end of one here from Millington, Ripley leads 7-0. Stay tuned in 30 seconds. We'll bring you the second quarter. We are getting ready for the second quarter. Ripley leads seven to nothing here in Millington. I'll take this opportunity to recognize our cheerleaders. The 2021 football cheerleaders. The captains are Hannah Chalk, Maddie Payton, and Carney Rose. The rest of the seniors are Liza Gofort, Paige Hardy, and Abby Sondergraf. Juniors, Selena Conrad, Kaylin Green, Lee Hutchins, Kaylee McNeil, Sophomores, Meg Coker, Kaylee Etheridge, Marley Heath, Holly Hendren, and Reese White. The freshmen are Aisha Body, Rhett White, and Laney Woodard. The coaches are Ginger Hearn and Bailey York. Back to live action. Here's a snap. The quarterback keeps it himself. He pulls it out and wrapped up immediately by the Tigers. That'll put Millington in a fourth down situation. So we'll find out now if they've got a kicker or not. Back to the line of for it. Yeah, they could. Don't see any personnel changes. And I would think if they had a kicker, they would try it here because it's, it's a long fourth down play and they came up empty the last time. But they may not have a kicker or Coach Michaels, who's a great guy, may just elect to go for it because they are lined up with that. It's going to be fourth down and around five. And a timeout is called by Ripley again. Well, they corned the same, same way as they did the first time. Yeah, but we're going to the I don't know. Yeah, it would make more sense that Millington would call it. At any rate, there's a timeout. Uh, also, I want to give a little bit of information, kind of a teaser about Tiny Knee. Uh, when Tiny Knee was in high school, he was the state champion 100-yard dash, state champion 220. He was a runner-up in the broad jump and he was an all-state football player his junior and senior year. He went to Wabash College, they were called the Little Giants, and he lettered in football and track all four years, and the years that he was at Wabash University College, they actually beat Purdue two out of the three years they were there. While Tiny Knee played there, they had a record of 32 and eight. He was an all-state fullback, with, get these names now, these are the four horsemen of Notre Dame. Uh, Sleepy Jim Crawley, one of the four horsemen. Second team were Schroeder, Miller, and Layton. They are attempting the extra point it appears. The other three horsemen, uh, four, the other three of the four horsemen of Notre Dame. Uh, basically what this says was that my understanding is all four of the four horsemen from Notre Dame all came out of Indiana and Tiny Knee beat three of them out. And here's the kick, and it's no, no good. good. It's going to go wide to the left. So, Rillington, Billington will turn the ball over on a failed extra point, and Ripley will get the ball back in pretty decent field position. Anyway, what I was saying was that the four horsemen, out of the four horsemen in Notre Dame, three of them made second team. Tiny Knee beat three of them out to be first team uh, in all state in football his senior year. Wow. He never went pro. Tiny knee. Well, he he played pro, son. Oh, he did? Yeah. All right, the Ripley Tigers will break the huddle. They'll come to the line of scrimmage with a wide out to the right and wing to the left. Hard under center. Takes the ball, heads it to Edler, going off the left side. And he, uh, they stack him up pretty close to the line of scrimmage. He, he got any, it wasn't much, maybe a yard. So it'll bring up second and long for the Tigers. Did they say what team he played for, Mike? Well, he played for a team out of Memphis called the Tigers. Oh, okay. And uh, the year he played for them, they beat the Green Bay Packers and they beat the Baltimore Colts. And just a lot of great information uh, that his grandson was able to give me. So. Uh, just stay tuned next week and you'll be able to hear the rest of it. And it's a mishandled snap by the Tigers. And I think Hearn gets back on the ball, but we lose the two that we had gained. 
So that'll put us back right at the first down marker. So it'll bring up now third down and 10 for the Tigers. Again, that wet ball is going to be a problem for both teams tonight. Give it one more big change that ball out, though. I mean, it, as soon as it hits the ground, it's going to be wet. I mean, they've got extra balls, and they do change them in and out. But, uh, like I said, once it's, once it's on the ground, it's wet. Wide right, wing right, turn under center. Takes a snap. That's a tall sweep to Edler. He's trying to get outside. He cuts it back inside for a short gain out to around the 24-yard line. That'll put the Tigers in a funny situation. So it will be fourth down and around five for the Ripley Tigers. Well, based on the yard stick over there, it looks like it's going to be fourth down and around six. Any rate, punting situation for the Tigers. Number eight for the Tigers, Josh Hearn, and to punt the ball away. He'll be standing back around his 12-yard line. The return man stands back around his 45. A good snap, a rugby-style kick comes to the near sideline and takes a pretty good Tiger bounce across the 40 and down to around the 36-yard line. So Millington will go back on offense as they trail 7-0 with 9.06 to go in the second quarter. Tigers lead 7-0. Also, just some other information about Tiny. In 1978, he was inducted into the Cumberland University Athletic Hall of Fame. In 1986, the Wabash College Sports Hall of Fame. In 1987, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Well, there must have been a penalty on the plate. They're going to mark it off against the tag. Or maybe they're going to put it. I'm going to mark it off. Yeah. Usually you have a kicking ball and you have a clean ball. And that was evidently the punt ball for, well, that was our punt ball, and so they want their own ball to play with because we actually use a different ball than what Millington does. Different brand ball. Millington, wide, one wide left, two to the right, shotgun formation, wing to the right. Quarterback wants to throw, he rolls to his right, he turns it up. And he is going to run it himself, and he misses the dodges the first tackle and the second one, and that turns in what would have been a yard or two into about a seven, eight-yard gain. So a nice play by the quarterback running the ball and keeping their drive in pretty good position. They say he steps out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. So that was a pickup of around seven. It'll be second down three. Good, good run by the quarterback. It was a good, yeah, good run. He makes some good cuts. Wide, wide, right, to the left. Quarterback's just going to run himself coming this way. And brought down, hit first by, let's see, that was number five, Carney, and 29. And 29 for the Tigers also on the tackle. That was Markham. Huge hit the line for a loss of a yard, third down three. And I think uh, the quarterback. Helmet came off, so he's got to come out for a play. So the backup quarterback will be in for Millington. This is one you want to take advantage of. That number two, that's Cameron uh, Perry here. What year is he? In the senior. Two wide right, one to the left. Takes a snap. The quarterback's going to run it himself. Going off the left side. He's in the secondary. And he's brought down by number 29. So tired, but not until he gets the first down. That tackle made by Martin. But not until he gets to the midfield strike. The nose of the football resting right at the 50 yard line. Great run by P U R Y E A R. Superior. Something like that. Something like that. Two wide left, one to the right, wing to the left. Shotgun formation running back to the quarterback's left. Quarterback rolls to his left, wants to throw, looking, 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 got a man in the flat. It goes through his hands and falls incomplete. Another, uh, another situation where a wet football is making the difference in tonight's game for both sides. Great job by Kobe Mayer, number 20, junior for the Tigers, to uh, be there. 
that's where I got a pump of uh, Haywood and Northside. Haywood seven, Northside nothing. Two wide right, one to the left. Snap. And the ball, the quarterback's going to keep it himself and go off the right side, pick up the round six, or seven, maybe eight. On the keeper. And just a quarterback Inside keeper on the right side. Ball will be at the 43, 43 yard line. He did a good job. So that's a pickup of seven. It'll be third and three. Yeah, he's a good quarterback. They've been grooming him since he was in about the sixth grade. They knew he was going to be their quarterback when he got in high school. And he is, he's only going to get better from here. He started last year as a freshman, now as a sophomore. He's coming into his own. Two wide right, one to the left. Here's the snap. And the ball to the running back this time and picks up a little but not much. Uh, still going to bring up fourth down. He's going to be shy of the first down mark. Four, taking on Tom to carry a yard. And so it will bring up fourth down, fourth down and one. So I would imagine them going forward here. Yeah. I think you were right a while ago. I think that was Millington that called the, the timeout because uh, you were right because they changed ends. That went to first quarter, second quarter. <coughs> you're correct. Here's the snap. And a miss out of the ball. And uh, Ripley doesn't get on it, but that's fine. It's still fourth down. So Ripley will get the ball on a, uh, just a over on downs. And they lose a couple of yards. So Ripley will have the ball at around the 43-yard line. So the Tigers back on offense again, 5.05 to go in the first half. Ripley leads 7-0 as they go back on offense. Ripley has no one wide, wing to the left. And the ball number 27 trying to get out the edge, and he gets a little corner of it, not much. He picks up a couple of yards out to around the 46-yard line, 45, depending on the spot. And that was for the Tigers. Yeah, 45-yard line, so a pickup of two. It'll be second down eight. Wing right. Everybody else in tight. And the ball to the running back going up the middle for a short game, maybe a yard. They've stacked up the middle of that defense. And, uh, we're not having a lot of success running up the middle. And we don't have our big pullback that we normally do. But we still got some good ball players back there. We've got some holes. So it'll be third and six for Millington. Great job by that Millington off of defense. Third and six, 5.30 to go until halftime. Ripley has their 147. Trying to pull them off sides. Doesn't work. So Ripley takes a timeout. We'll take a 30 second timeout with them and be back right after this. 5.19 to go until halftime. We are waiting for Ripley to come out from a timeout. Situation is it's going to be third down six for the Tigers. They have the ball on their own 47 yard line. Wing right. Everybody else in tight. Turn under center. And the ball to the running back going off the left side. He's picking and cutting and keeps running it. hard. He gets the first down. As he follows his blockers off the left side and crosses the 50 down to the 46-yard line. And so that is a CSC Renovations Tiger, or excuse me, the Discount Home Solutions, both of them by Clint Conrad. But Discount Home Solutions, first down. Go see Clint for all your remodeling needs. So it'll be first down 10. Five, just over five minutes to go until halftime. Ripley leads 7-0. They have the ball. Two wide to the right this time. Edler on the inside. And they hand the ball to number 24. He gets hit in the backfield. He fights out of that one and ends up picking up a couple of yards, but he could have lost three or four. 
Jordan Glass with Kerry Glass. Andre Macklin on the He did a good job just not losing any yardage on that play. A yard to the 45, second down nine. They will come up second down nine with four minutes and 30 seconds to go until halftime. Two wide right. Hedler on the inside. One to the left. Quarterback wants to throw. Hearn looking, looking, looking. He's trying to, oh. He get, well, he got tangled up in his own people on the sideline, it looked like. Well, that, that, we'd be past interference against us on our own team. They had that bird out there to the, to the right, wide open. Yeah, he, it must have been called that way because Hearn was already looking that way. He was planning on throwing a, uh, looked like a fade pattern, or not a fade pattern, but a lead pattern, just kind of over the back shoulder. Uh, going down the far sideline, but uh, he couldn't get, he just couldn't get loose. I don't know if his feet got tangled up or, or what, but he went down, so the ball falls incomplete. So it's third down and nine for the Tigers. Two wide right, one to the left. Shotgun formation. Man in motion. And he toss it to the man in motion. He's going to be wrapped up in the backfield for a loss. Back at the 50, he's going to lose. He was actually third and 11. He loses four more. He's going to be fourth down and 15 for the Tigers. They go backwards on this well, drive. Great job play. by the uh, pros and defense. Uh, no doubt. To follow that play and uh, put us in full time for you. It's going to be out where they spot it. It's going to be about 4 13. So the Tigers send the punt team on. He'll be standing back around his 40 yard line. And it's a mishandled snap. And so. The Tigers just pick it up and try to run it. That was Carney that picked it up, and it was just a bad snap. So the ball goes over on downs again. This wet field wreaking havoc on both sides. Smart move by Carney. Yeah, it was. His heads up play. Um, he saved five or six yards. Uh, you know, he had an option. He might have hit the first down, but uh, at least he didn't let them pick it up and run back the other way with it. That's always a positive. You can find something positive in everything. You look deep enough. Two wide left, one to the right, wing to the right. Quarterback wants to throw. He's looking down. He's got a man down the far sideline. And falls incomplete. He hit him right in the hands. Led him just right. That was a well-thrown ball. Uh, not sure how much the, the uh, ball being wet played in that incomplete pass, but it does fall incomplete. It'll bring up second down team. Yeah, that was ten for Garrett Haley. How big is their quarterback? Played last week for seven for a touchdown. He did stop and go six foot. He weighed 175 pounds. And he's in shotgun formation. Two wide to either side. And he's wanting to throw. He throws it over the middle. It's complete, but hit immediately short of the first down by number 20, Mainers and number 29, which is Markham. And they stop them short the first down, so they put them back in a fourth down and four situation. Ball, knows the ball resting right on the 50 yard line. That's third down four, check that. Two wide left, two wide right. Quarterback looking to throw again. He throws a quick pass, and he's got a man, but it falls incomplete. Uh, I'm not sure if he just led him too much or what, but it, uh, it does fall incomplete. So now it brings up fourth down and four for the Tigers. Yeah, it was uh, about three yards past the receiver. They led him a little bit too much, and again, you know, we just don't know how much that ball being wet, you know, could have slipped out of the quarterback's hand. You know, and he might have thrown it that way if people were playing in the desert. Who knows? We're just glad it's fourth back. Fourth and four, 50 yard line. Actually, fourth and three. If you look at the sticks. 2.50 to go, first quarter. Ripley leads 7 0. In a big region game for the Tigers. Ripley needs to win this. There's going to be a timeout, and Millington's going to call a timeout. And so we'll take it with them and be back right after this. That timeout brought to you by Star Therapy. Go see Jessica Danley and the Butler. That's not Danley anymore. Uh, tell you truth, I can't think of what her last name is. But Jessica, Red Dog's daughter. 
she's there and uh, she did a great job for me when I had my physical therapy. So go see them and they will take care of you. I have to get a clarification on that. I'll probably get the text for long. Also, I want to give a shout out to Red Dog and the entire green team for what they do for Ripley. They keep our field looking great. It's one of the best looking fields around. Here's a snap. Quarterback wants to throw as they're going for it on fourth down. He turns it up and gets the first down. Gets down to the 45. It looked like, you know, he wanted to throw the ball, but we had everybody back in coverage, so he had enough green in front of him. He just turned it up and keeps their drive alive with 237 and counting to go here until halftime, Ripley holding on to a seven to nothing lead. Two wide left, two wide right. Quarterback rolls to his left, wanting to throw, throwing into the flat. It's complete and hit hard immediately there by number 29 for the Tigers. Again, number 29, Markle, as he catches him right about a half yard behind the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down and 11. Good job, I mean, he, Hit him hard as soon as he caught the ball. Two minutes to go until halftime. Two wide to either side for Millington. There's a snap. Quarterback wants to throw again. Looking, looking, looking. Trying to go down the far sideline. And Ripley had a chance to pick it off, but a good job just knocking it down. Number 12 for the Tigers. Theus again there on the on defending for the Tigers and knocks it down. So it'll bring up third and 11. Yeah, it was. Uh, if it hadn't been a little bit, you know, led him a little bit too much to the outside and uh, threw it a little bit behind him. And uh, Theus did a good job of knocking it down. So it'll be third down 11 for Millington, too wide to either side. Quarterback wants to throw, drop straight back, looking, looking, looking. Watch for the. Yep, watch the screen. There it is, right over the middle. And good job by the Tigers. They have that one sniffed out all the way. Tackling for about a yard loss. And number 29. And number 29 all over the field. They've got some defensive players out there that are playing really well all year. And Theus is one of them. Of course, Carney is another one. Crowder is another one. Uh, you know, Tar uh, Carney is another one. Uh, I hate to even mention it. I'm going to leave somebody out here. It's a quick kick by Millington. And it's going to hit and roll out of bounds at about the 12 and a half, about to, well, I don't see where they're spotted around the 11 yard line. So we've only got a minute and eight seconds to go until halftime. Ripley leads by seven to nothing, and they'll have the ball first down and 10 from their own 11. They'll get the ball back coming from the yeah, second yeah, half. That's right. Uh, Edler, you know, a really good defensive player as well. And again, I almost hate to, uh, of course, we've got uh, Lattimore. Uh, some of my, I know their numbers, but I can't, some, can't think of their name right off the top of my, top of my head. Uh, at any rate, I hate to even mention any of them, but I've got to mention some of them. Wide out to the left for the Tigers. Hand the ball to the running back, number 27. Trying to, he goes off left tackle, and he's in the secondary. He's got the first down out to around the 29-yard line. So that should stop the clock, and while they move the sticks, it'll be first down and 10 Tigers. That first down, oh, uh, fight on the field. Or, and I don't know if it's a fight, but it's definitely a, a scrumble. A scrum, maybe they call it in rugby, it seems like. Uh, I do see two flags on the field, and maybe they'll be offsetting. Uh, I know Coach uh, Cruz, and I know Coach Michaels, and neither one of them condone that at all. They're both really good guys, and neither one of them will be happy about that. Uh, doesn't matter who started it. You, you don't participate. Uh, let's see who who the penalty is on, if anybody, hopefully they offset. Coach Michaels, yeah, I see him. He's having a conversation with, I guess, one of the players that was involved. And they say it's against Millington, dead ball foul against Millington. And I saw Coach uh, Michaels, I believe that's who it was, you know, who, who's a great stand-up guy, been here a long time, played at the University of Memphis. Uh, really giving his player an earful. I mean, you know, not only does it look bad on you and your team, it hurts you and your team. But that should move the ball 15 yards and put the Tigers with 59 seconds to go with a first down and the ball moved ahead close to midfield. Let's realize that the, the, the runner was down at the point of contact. 
I, I didn't see what happened over there. And now they move it. I was a spot foul, so uh, they move it out to about the 44-yard line. Still first down for the Tigers with 59 seconds to go. In the first half, Ripley leads 7-0. And we'll get the ball to start the second half. Hearn's going to be under center. Going to have wing right, wide left. There, we're waiting on the referee to blow it into play. There we go. And to hand the ball off this way. Uh, the running back is in the secondary. He, uh, if he'd have cut outside, I think he would have broken, but he still gets all the way down the 40 yard line. Picks up about 15 on the play. <clears throat> With 50 seconds left on the clock, Ripley on the move. So that does give the Tigers the first down, moves the sticks. Maybe we can get some more points here before halftime. Wide out right, wing right, and left. Hand the ball to Harney, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage and brought down behind the line. I guess Forrest Progress is going to be at the, well, he's going to show he loses about a yard. So it'll be second down 11, but the big thing is it's 19 seconds to go, so we may have one or two more plays in this half. Probably one, because we're down to 13. Millington takes a timeout. Timeout, So we'll hold it here with only, I can't read that. Does that say 13? What, what does the clock say down there? Is it 12 or 13? I think or it's 18, 12. 18, maybe. Is it 18? I mean, it looks like maybe some lights are out. Yeah. I, I can't tell. I, I can't tell what it is. But somewhere, it's somewhere less than 20 seconds. Because <laughs> it's a one and then another number. <clears throat> it's hard to read. So the situation when we come back from this timeout, it's going to be second down and 11 for the Tigers. They have the ball at the Millington 41-yard line. And we've got less than 20 seconds left on the clock. Ripley has a 7-0 lead. Again, that timeout brought to you by Star Therapy. Go see the group out there, and they will get you back to work or on the field as quickly as possible. And they, they did me a great job when I had my knee replacement. I had to have therapy. She pushed me. She said, I'm going to push you like, like you were my dad. Uh, she did. She pushed me hard, but I've uh, had positive results from it ever since. Ripley up to the line, wide out to the left, wing to the left. And they hand the ball off to Edward, trying to go inside and nothing doing there. He's going to lose a couple of yards, so I'm sure that's going to be the last right play of the first half. So at the end of the first half here in Millington, and that the score at halftime is Ripley 7, half. Millington 0. So we'll be back Millington with the second half, half in about 15 one. minutes or so, so be sure to stay tuned. And uh, if you haven't heard the coach's show yet, it'll be at halftime. See you on the second half. We are back as we get ready for the second half. Tracy, you got some updated scores for us? Yeah, West Union 35 to nothing over Union City at halftime. Haywood, uh, well, it's, it's Hardin County 21, Lexington at the half. Haywood 28 to 6 over Jackson Northside. Brockton, Milan, 36 to 6 over Parker County in the second quarter. Did you give the Union City score? I did. It was uh, Union City getting beat 35 to nothing by West Years at halftime on the second quarter. We've got West Years coming up in uh, the game nine, I think. Eight or nine. Half time score to pass along. I'll definitely be looking forward seven, to going up there because I can't go that close to Boyette without stopping and getting some good fish and country ham. Well, I wish I could join you. I wish you could too. Uh, but I, again, I, I kind of wish I was doing what you're doing too. So, so uh, some information of that uh, skull full of fights, whatever started us right before halftime. Uh, number five uh, for Millington was involved in that. Evidently, he threw a punch and he's been ejected from the game. Barnes, quarterback, Richard 
start this offensive drive in Tiger territory. Well, 
Well, that's what they told me. Uh, but it was a, it was a, a student on the sideline that said he got ejected because he threw a punch. But he, he, evidently, that's not true, or it was a different number because number five is still out there. You're right. Wide outs to either side. Wing left, the hand to the running back. Oh, the quarterback pulls it out, and number five there, Carney, brings him down with a solo tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He loses a round four. Great job there by Carney, Johnny on the spot. I mean, he don't make 95 tackles for six games. He's not been around somewhere. That's right, Mike. Great job, but it looks like it's going to be more like yeah. two foot, a <laughs> two-yard gone. Yeah, it does. They brought him down, but they gave him his forward progress. So uh, just across the 50 at the 49, it'll bring up a second down to 12. Neither team really got a lot of offense going so far in this game. It's been more of a defensive game. Let's see if the Tigers can keep it up. Wide outs to either side. Here's a pass in the hole, and it was led him just a little too much. He had a step on our uh, cornerback. Uh, cornerback was right there, would have made the tackle had he caught it, but he led him a little too much, and the ball's incomplete. Uh, 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 on that and Lattimore out there. I wanted to try to name off some of these guys. Uh, of course, Markham out there. Carney, AT3, Edler, Leas, man in motion now, shotgun formation. Quarterback rolls to his right, wanting to throw, wanting to throw. He runs up into a crowd and stays on his feet as he picks up about two, maybe three yards across the 45. In fact, they're going to spot it right at the 45. About seven, eight. So let's see if Millington's going to go for it. And it looks like they are. They may do a quick kick again. We'll find out. They get up to the line quick, trying to snap the ball before the Tigers get ready. And here's the snap, and it is a quick kick. And it's an uh, end over end kick. Let's see it. It does take a Millington bounce and bounces down inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. So Ripley will have the ball. We'll start this second drive of the second half. Again, Ripley 7, Millington 0. You know, great. Great defensive battle. Yeah. yeah. You know, why did the game 35, 45 to nothing? To me, it's just... Final, <laughs> final play. Uh, you know, it was an exciting game all the way. Ripley back on offense, two wide left, one to the right, shotgun formation. Tiger spreading it out and looking to throw. He's got a man, he throws behind him, but he goes back and completes it out to the 19 yard. Round three. That was turned to mark. So it says about a five yard pickup, so it'll be second five. So they do spot it. Yard gains. Number 76 is the center tonight. That's John Baines. He's, that's not him. No, it's Raymond Brown. 6'1, 388. Ripley hands the ball off. Going right up the gut. And comes to the carry. Markham. Yeah, you're right. 27. 27 is Barbie on the carry. And he picks up about four, so it'll be third down one, ball at the 22-yard line. Ripley on their own end of the field. 7.35 to go, third quarter, Ripley on top, 7-0. Tiger now. Edler is in the backfield. Hearn split wide out to the left. And you know it's just gonna be a run to the left, and see if he can get that corner. He does get the edge of it, and he's going to be run out of bounds short of the first down, it looks like. He's going to bring up third and short. Let's see where they spot it. And uh, he actually loses it, though. So it's going to be fourth and around three or four. We'll say four, fourth and four. The Tigers in a punting situation. So he loses two. Back for the Tigers. Here's a snap, good snap, gets a good kick off, Great kick. and he runs him back and hits and takes a tiger roll all the way back to the 34-yard line. 
So Millington will be back on offense. First down and 10 from their own 34 with 6.38 to go in the third quarter. They still holding on to a seven to nothing lead. It's just been back and forth, back and forth. Moving up and down the field, but uh, nobody's getting in the end zone and I don't mind them not getting in, but I'd like to get in a couple of times. 8 Is that the third? No, it's your ten pound. Yeah. Millington to the line, wide out to either side. Wing to the right, shotgun formation. Running back to the quarterback's left. There's the snap, blitz is on, tries to get. Quarterback keeps it and goes off the left side for a pickup, depending on the spot forward progress, probably a couple. We'll call it second down eight. Yard of the 46, second down nine. And again, our sponsor for tonight's game, Meals Food Plaza. Go see Roger for those good homegrown tomatoes. And I tell you, he's got a strawberry cake down there that I can't stay away from. And uh, Norman Henry, both those old teammates of mine. And uh, he does construction. Give him a call anytime. Here we go. Back to live action. Quarterback handed. No, he pulls it back out himself, trying to get outside on the right side. And he does get into the linebacker level, brought down after a pickup of around five or six. Still going to bring up third down and medium distance. Let's see, they're going to spot the ball at the 42-yard line. So it'll be third and three for the Millington Trojans. I didn't say who did it, but I know it happened too many. Go see uh, Bo over Green Greenbridge Investment and Insurance. Canales Body Shop, everybody knows Kevin, Ripley Power and Light. Be sure to go by and see Mike Allman. Thank him for supporting the, the game. Here's the snap. They hand the ball to the running back this time and hitting the backfield and brought down by number five, Carney, for a loss back at the 39 yard line. Tiger defense standing tall this time. And then Taco versus Sushi. Now, you know the owner there. What's his name? His name was Ernesto, but I call him Ernest. Okay. Great guy there, great food. Uh, BR Supply, uh, Blake's a great guy there, very knowledgeable, go see him. Thornton's Furniture, uh, go by and see all the group there, they'll always take care of you. CSC Renovations, that is Clint Conrad. Here comes the Millington back as they get ready for another quick kick and they kick it off. And it's a good kick. And it's a good kick. Across the first level and brought down by his ankles he almost broke it he was yeah. hitting the ground because he wanted to break it he got it out to the 42 yard line so with 433 to go in the third it's going to be first down and 10 for the tigers from their own 42 yard line well who turned the stats in uh, on the high school team is it the coaches as far as i know uh, also i want to thank hutchinson chapel church of god and ripley church of god yeah, great, great churches we good churches. I hear they just got an outlaw for a pass, pass well, over there. No, I'm just kidding. All right, back to live action. Wide out to the right, wing to the left. And they hand the ball off to Crowder going off the left side. He runs hard on the first down. He's, right. He's still on his feet. Picks up around five or six. And a hard run there by Crowder. Great job. Nessa Sweet, go see those guys there, those two guys that are working their way through college. One's going to school to be a nurse and one's a physical therapist. Uh, Christian Family Medicine, uh, extended hours in the evening as well as on weekends. A lot of locations all around all around West Tennessee, McDonald's of Ripley. Discount Home Solutions, Clint Conrad, again, one of the uh, ace pitchers for the Ripley Tigers back when they won the state championship in baseball in 2003. Tigers to the line. Wide out to the left. And the ball over the quarterback and the running back. The mesh point wasn't real good. We still picks up a couple. Gets it out right to the midfield strike. It's going to bring up third down and around two. It's been a good time. 14, for the South Carroll on the carry. Uh, of course, no. Dan Douglas. Everybody knows Dan. Always, you know, former Ripley uh, athlete as well as big time supporter for Ripley sports all over, all over uh, every sport. Uh, they played football at Ripley and then. Uh, Went to Ole Miss and got his degree and appreciate him sponsoring this. Back to live action, wide out right, wing left. And the ball to running back going up the left side. He's got the first down. And he is across the, third, the 45, down to around the 43. So that'll move the sticks. And that's a, a discount home solutions first down. 
and that was Turner Crowder leading the way on that big block. It was. Uh, star Physical Therapy. Go see Jessica and her bus. Farm Bureau Insurance. And they also sponsor our kickoffs. I got a score update. It's a big one. What we got? Tyler Bird 14, Covington 6. Wow. Wide right. Wing right. It's a tall sweep coming this way. He's got a little room. He's in the secondary, and the flag comes out. I think it's going to come back. Of course, Lauderdale Lumber and Hardware, they support all the sports here in Lauderdale County, and appreciate the, the gang down there supporting all the sports here in Ripley. Quality service. Go see Mike, Paul, and the bunch down there. They'll do you a great job. And then Bank of Ripley, they support all the sports in Lauderdale County, and all education for Lauderdale County. So we appreciate all of our sponsors without them. This broadcast wouldn't be possible. That's going to take it back to right at the 50 yard line again. So the Tigers are going to start out. It's going to be first again, but it's going to be first and 15 from the 50. 2.20 to go, third quarter. Wing right, wide right. Turn under center, puts a man in motion. And they hand the ball to number 27, trying to get out. He gets in the secondary. He's right at the original yard marker, which is going to be about a five or six yard pickoff. Barbie on the carry that was Barbie, and he gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, so it'll make it second and ten. So it's about a six, seven yard pickup. Uh, about a six yard pickup because they say it's second down and 11 based on these sticks. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I'm not really surprised at the score of Cubs and Tigers and both of those are great clubs. Great game. Edler's going to be split wide to the right, wing right. And he's wanting to throw. He's wanting to throw to Edler. But he's going to throw short. And I think he trapped it. It's going to fall in completely. Yeah, he's on the ground. But Edler was wide open down the field. Uh, he just uh, misread it and uh, threw to his short man instead of his long man. Edler running wide open about 20 yards down the field. And uh, again, that ball probably a lot harder to throw when it's wet. Yeah especially to get a good grip on it and throw it for a lot of distance. When you throw to Edler and you give him much of a chance to run down the field, you got to throw it hard because he's going to be a long way down the field in a short period of time. Ripley back to the line. Two wide out to the right this time. Wide to the right is going to be Hunter and Edler. Edler on the inside, Hunter on the outside. There's a snap, want to throw again. And he's got a man. He ain't going to accept it. And it was in, the, the, I'm not sure if the, uh, if the quarterback Edler makes the tackle, not, and it was intended for him, but I'm not sure if uh, Edler was supposed to cut out and cut in, or if the quarterback had it backwards, but he cut inside and the ball was thrown outside, and it was the defensive back there just ready to pick it off. So we turned the ball over on the interception, and Lick, or Millington will have the ball now at their own 36-yard line, first down and 10 with a minute 15 to go in the third quarter. Wide outs to either side for Millie. Wing right, shotgun formation. Hand the ball to the wide out. It goes in motion, he turns it inside, and Crowder, one of the first ones on the tackle there, and they pick the picking Check that. They bring him down after a short pickup. They say the ball is at the 40, the 39 yard line. At the 40, they spot it right at the 40. So it was a four yard pickup. It'll be second down six. Yeah, the main thing we worried about that clock. That's being a hit. Yeah, we just need to be hit by at least one and all goes zero. <laughs> Wide outs to either side, wing to the left, shotgun formation. Here's the snap, and the quarterback's going to keep it himself and go off the left side, and he picks up a yard or two, not much. Nowhere near enough to the first down. So it'll bring up third and round four. Yeah, Tracy, I'm going to be envious of you when you're on that trip. But I'm, I'm still back here in Tennessee. I, like, I love Tennessee, but I like to take trips too. Got two yards, I mean, two years, but I hadn't had a vacation, so I think it's time to do 
I'll argue with you. I, I wish uh, that is the end of the third of the third quarter. So we'll take a one minute timeout and we'll be back with the fourth and final quarter right after this. We are getting ready to start the fourth quarter. The score here in Millington is Ripley seven, Millington zero. The ball is at the 42 yard line. It's gonna be second down and four for Millington. And we'll come back for the first play of the fourth quarter. They'll come out, come with wide outs to either side. Oh, one of uh, uh, Millington's players just falls out uh, with a cramp, and so that's going to be an injury timeout. And that injury timeout brought to you by Christian Family Medicine. That uh, you, know, you can tell that's just a cramp. He's got his leg sticking straight out. And that's a, it's not an injury, but it's a very painful situation. Been there and done that, and uh, I feel for all these young guys. Of course, it's you know it's not not hot, but it's Warm and muggy tonight. Yeah. Especially when we had this eight two degrees up here. Yeah. Uh, oh, another point of interest for Tiny Neat. Uh, the Tiny Neat boat was actually I don't have it in front of me, but I do know the Tiny Neat boat. Uh, Ripley played in the first Tiny Neat boat that there ever was, and played in the last one that there was. And I. Could have been could have been 1980 uh, when the when high school decided to do playoffs. Then uh, it kind of took all the bowls out. Still attending to the player there down on the field. Let's see. Here's some information about the Big Ten. Uh, coach Kelly, in 1963, was the Big Ten Coach of the Year. Jack Kane was in 71 in Covington. 75, Rufus Lassiter from Haywood in 76. That was the last year of the Big Ten. That was Richard Ross from Jackson Central America. Okay, back to live action. It's third down four. Millington has the ball, their own side of the field, 42 yard line, wide outs to either side. Man in motion, they hand it to the man in motion, trying to get outside. Cuts it back inside, now back outside, he's off to the races. And I don't think nobody's gonna catch him, and they're not. And so we're within one point, seven to six. And I can tell you, I think, that Edler must not have been on the field because you would have seen a streak I don't know if he'd have caught him, but he would have been flying down the field to try to catch him, so I'm guessing he wasn't on the field. But at any rate, I saw uh, Coach Cruz and his defensive coordinator uh, chewing on somebody that let him outside. So we are, are within one point of starting the new ball game with 11 to 43 to go in the fourth quarter. Ripley up by one. And we uh, they need a bad snap or a bad kick. They missed the first one. Let's see if they missed this one. And they do. And so it was blocked. So Ripley holds on to a 7-6 lead. And, you know, just like last week when we missed one, one of Coach Kelly's famous sayings was, if you leave points on the field, they'll come back to haunt you. But they say it was a penalty on the play. But Ripley was offside. So now Millington will get an opportunity to kick the ball again a yard and a half closer. Yep. Here and it is good this time. So we got a tie ball game, seven to seven. This is Millington's homecoming. They've got a great crowd here tonight. Uh, one thing the coach and I were laughing about earlier uh, in the week or last week. I think he said the first year he was here, we played in six or seven homecoming games uh, because everybody wanted Ripley for homecoming because uh, you know we had a history for the last year or two of not being very good. Uh, but this is the only homecoming we're playing except for our own this year that I'm aware of. Uh, but used to, we played a lot of homecoming games. And 
when you become uh, a team that's hard to beat, people don't want to schedule for homecoming. Of course, sometimes it comes down to scheduling. You know, if you don't, you, you like to have it around the middle of the season, and if you don't uh, play a home game around the middle of the season, then sometimes you just have to take whoever is there, or you have to, you have to schedule it earlier or late. Well, I've always said, Mike, I've always said, your record don't mean you're going to a game. No, not that game. Okay, the Tigers definitely need to, I'm going to quote Craig Fitchew here and say the Tigers need to drive the length of the field, eat up a bunch of clock, and score. Back deep is Edward and Hunter. It's a short kick, it's going to go out of bounds. And so let's see if we'll make a kick again or we'll take it at 35, and it appears that we're going to get the ball at 35. See what Coach Cruz and Lace Tingall dive up here. Well, Ripley's offense comes back on the field. Well, they gonna make them kick it up. Yep, they are. You're right. Yeah, well, here's the thing. They do it again. They Okay, the original Big Ten Conference was started in 1940. Ripley, Covington, Somerville, Brownsville, Dyersburg, Humboldt, Milan, Union City, Trenton, and Paris. Those, now that's something I learned last night. We actually at one point had a East and West and we had 12 teams in the Big Ten. Wow. And they actually we had a Big Ten Conference and you had a, 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 a little Big Ten Conference. Uh, which was made up of the smaller schools, you know. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the school. It was in Lake County, Ridgely, I think. Uh, anyway, and then of course you had the Real Foot Conference. There were a lot of conferences around back then. But, uh, anyway, here we go for another kickoff. It's a long end over and end kick, and it's going to go out of bounds again. So I'm guessing we'll back them up five more yards and have them kick again. So back then, you know, when they did all the Big Ten, there wasn't anything at the school having classification about 1A. Yeah, you had 1A, 2A, and 3A. That was it. If you were, I think, and I might be wrong about this, but if you had over, I think it was 1,000 students, you were in 3A, didn't make it if you had 1,001 or you had 4,000. So they were, it's just, I know when I played, there were three classifications, and, and that was it. So they do back them up. Now they're going to be kicking from the 30. Okay, the Tiny Knee Bowl started in 1948 and ended in 1980. Ripley versus Bartlett in the first one, and Ripley versus Harding Academy in the last one. Ripley won the last tiny knee bowl by the score of 33 to 28 against Harding Academy. They lost the first one to Bartlett, 14 to 21. Then Ripley played in the second one against Trenton. They lost 20 to 12. Okay, it's we're getting ready for kickoff. Got an update: 31 to nothing, Harding County over Lexington. Here's the short kick it's going to be taken and he's going to be brought down to the 50 yard line so ripley will have they're going to say he's out of bounds at around the 48 uh he's going to say he's at the 48 40 47 yard line so the tigers start out on millington end of the field 11 39 to go in this ball game the score is seven to seven ripley needs to heat up a bunch of clock and make sure they put some points on the board before they give the ball back away and then play defense. You know I'm stating the obvious. Again, that score was 7, it was 7.45 to go in the third. It was 31 nothing. Hart County over Lexington. Ripley wide left, wing right. And the ball to Crowder going off the left side. He goes forward for about four off the right side. So it'll be second down. They're going to say he's at the 45. So second down to two. It'll be second and eight. Second 
Ripley will break the huddle and send Hunter out wide to the left. Wing right. A tall sweep to Edler going to the Ripley side of the field. He's got the edge, but he only gets out to about the across the 40 yard line. That's a decent pickup of around five. just gets one little crease because if he does, he's gone. He hasn't really got a chance to show his speed in this game yet. Of course, the wet field, I'm sure, plays a big part in that. So it'll bring up third down three for Ripley. Knows the ball rest right on the 40-yard line. Wide right, wing left. And to hand the ball to Crowder again, he's got the first down going off the right side. Out to the 30, looks like a 37 yard line. Had to pick up three and looks like he got about three and a half to four. So that'll move the sticks. That is a discount home solution. Clint Conrad first down. Go see Clint for all your remodeling needs. Ripley will have Hunter split wide to the right. Wing to the left, Harn under center. And almost didn't get the handle on the ball if it gets the hand it off, but he's gonna lose about a yard. Uh, again, that wet ball just not being a friend to either team that has to handle it. Uh, it just kind of threw off the, the timing for the running back and the quarterback. The quarterback had to kind of get his second handle on the ball. And so they lose one, it'll bring up second down to 11. So it'll be second and 11, nine minutes and 10 seconds to go in the ball game. High seven to seven, Ripley and Millington. Wing right, wide left. And they hand it to Edler, and he's gonna be tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Loses back about the yard that we had gained. And so it'll be third down 10. No gain on or thereabouts. The well, they say no gain, so he didn't lose anything. It'll make it third down and about 11. Ball on the 37 yard line. Terrence Hunter split wide right, wing left. Wing in motion, switches sides. And it's a tall sweep going out the far side and he cuts back inside and he, he does a good job of squirting out and getting some yards out of it, but still well short of the first down. They're gonna say he's his forward progress is at the 35. So he gets, uh, gets back inside the sticks, but it's gonna be fourth down and around nine. Tiger's gonna go for it. Yeah, you're just about, you know, if you punt it and it goes into the end zone, you're back out at the 20, so. Of course, Coach Cruz will, he'll, he'll, he'll roll the dice sometimes. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it don't. But of course, we're trying to pull them off here, I would think. And we're gonna have a procedure call. Uh, we called a timeout and I was glad because we would have had, an, we would have had a procedure called as one of our running backs which had been set for a count by the time that uh, the ball would have been snapped. Any more scores for us there? Uh, Peabody 36, Hall nothing. Uh, until 14 to 6, down for a cover. I mean, it's it keep up with these things. Let's see, in 1959, Ripley went 10 and 0 and won the Big Ten. They were 10 and 1 in 1965, won the Big Ten. Westview 42, Union City zero. Wow. Well, we know we've got uh, Dyersburg and uh, Westview both coming up shortly, so that uh, makes our what we're looking at a little, a little more daunting. But hey, let's get out of this one first. We'll worry about the next one next week. Well, we have two weeks to get ready for the next one, and that'll be homecoming. Of course, that will be at Ripley against Bolton. 
quarterback wants to throw. He's got a man, and it's tipped and it intercepted. And he's got some room. He's going to go all the way, it looks like. No, one person has a chance to stop him, but he can't catch him. So they're going to go back all the way with 7.20 on the clock. Union City, oh, excuse me, Millington, it was a tipped ball, and it went up in the air. Millington came down with it, and it comes down the close to the sideline to the Millington bench and returns it all the way to take their first lead of the game, 13 to 7, with 7.19 on the clock. Well, Great yeah. defense by Millington. Tip ball's a tip ball, you know. That's where they do the tip ball drills. And, you know, as a quarterback, you can't control that once it leaves your hand. You know, a, a tip ball is anybody's ball in there. Let's see. Uh, they're short a player, uh, Millington is. And they did it, so they're up 14 to 7. <laughs> Coach Michaels was running to catch one of his players that was supposed to be out there for the extra point. So they got 10 and made the extra point with 10 men on the field instead of nine. I don't know that that's, uh, I guess it's legal. You can you can have two men, but I don't guess you can have too little. If you want to play with less than 11, I guess that's okay. Well, I did see number 28 on the field for the So we're getting ready for a kickoff. Ripley for the first time in the game. Trail is 14-7. Ripley's has defeated Millington the last two or three times they played them. I can't remember. I know they defeated them in the regular season once for sure and once in the first round of the playoffs another time. But this has been, you know, I would imagine that both coaches, I'd like to think they both would agree with me that, you know, it's been a pretty sloppy game. Uh, you know, neither team has played really well. Uh, I do believe that the wet conditions are, you know, Big contributing factor on that, but uh, you know both teams are playing on the same field and they're both making mistakes. Yeah. And uh, you know they're, the difference in the game is is a turnover so far. We've had one, they've had two, and they've scored twice and we've scored once. All extra points were good, so scored 14 to seven, 719 on the game clock as we get ready for the kickoff. Farm Bureau kickoff, go see. The group at Farm Bureau, here's the kick, and it's uh, on the ground, and a good job there by Ripley. It was uh, basically, it looked like it was trying to be an onside kick in the up man for the Tigers, which is AT3. Uh, Austin Thompson the third, he just falls down on it, and he has the, he had the ball right at the 49-yard line, so just shy of the 50-yard line, so good field position for the Tigers, but now their back is against the wall. They've got to put some points up now. You know, that last time they could have put them up to have gone ahead. Now they got to put them up to stay even. Yeah. Terrence Hunter flipped wide to the left. Wing to the right. There's the snap. And then the ball to the running back. He's in the secondary, well, not secondary level, but he was in the linebacker level, pick up of around four. So it'll make it second down six for the Tigers. I'll take a win in overtime, but I'd rather win in regulation. Yeah. Ripley will come with wide out to the left, wing to the right. Our under center takes a snap, hands it to Crowder, and he is stopped in the backfield. Never had an opportunity to get going. Uh, somebody on the offensive line missed their, must have missed their assignment because uh, he was wrapped up just about the time he got the ball. Loss of a yard back to 47, third down six. Ripley will break the huddle. They'll send wide out to the left, wing to the right. Turned under center. There's a snap. It's a reverse coming to Edler, coming this way. If he can get outside, he'll have some room. And he's going to be dragged down at the 44-yard line. Pick up of around maybe four, but it's going to bring up fourth down and about four. They'll spot the ball at the 44. 
Broncos. And Tigers will go for it here. Edler comes up a little gimpy. And let's see, uh, he's going to he's come off the field. Now he's not a, a big guy. He's just fast, and he can't take, you know, a bunch of hits. And he's uh, really favoring that right leg, and I'm hoping it's just a prank. I don't know that it is, but I'm hoping and praying that it is. Wide out right, wing to the left. Quarterback takes the ball, hands it off. He got the first down across the 40. And that was number 24 on the carry for the Tigers, which is Jordan Glass. He's a junior, six foot. 212 pounds, that'll move the sticks. And that's going to be a discount home solutions. Clint Conrad first down. Great move by number 24 Blacks. Carry it long, get us first down. Let's time is the best. 449 to go in the game. Millington 14, Ripley 7. Wide right, wing left. And they hand the ball to Crowder going off the right side, and they hit him just about the line of scrimmage. And I tell you, you know, they didn't really give him a chance to get going, but I was looking downfield, and I've mentioned this before to the coaches at least. I don't know if said it on there, but Taylor Carney, he not only is a heck of a tackler, he is a whale of a blocker. He had he pancaked a guy about five yards downfield. Crowder had got into the secondary. But to the linebacker level, he had some room because Carney had already put his man on the ground. Wide right, wing right. Hand the ball to 24, trying to get outside. And he's stopping it, now trying to go back inside. Now gets it outside for a short game, maybe three. It'll bring up third and long for the Tigers. Third and around seven. So the ball will be spotted at 36, so it's about a three-yard pickup, so it'll be third. Time to go in the ball game. Ripley three and three on the season and definitely trying to stay ahead of that 500 mark. Here's a snap. They hand the ball to, it's kind of a mid, uh, and a helmet comes off and a fight, a little argument. I won't say it was a fight. Just a little scuffle. No flag, but it should be enough for the first down. Depending on the spot, they picked it up, moved it back. And I think they're going to say it's fourth down and less than a yard. That's what they're saying. Good push up front. I just quarterback sneak it for that yard. But we haven't had a lot of success going up the middle. Coach, you've done a good job. Yeah, I mean, you know, you like the coaches say, all you can do is put them in position to win. You can tell them where to be, but you can't do it for them. So, two minutes and 35 seconds to go in the ball game. Ripley trails by seven up to the line, and now we've got a timeout. We're going to keep it here. It's going to be fourth down at the Trojan. 30 yard line. It's 2.35 on the clock. Millington leads 14 to 7. Still no change in that uh, Covenant and Dinosburg game. They're still 14 to 6. So this was a Millington timeout. They want to make sure that. First thing I'm sure they're being told is don't jump off sides. Of course, that goes without saying, but you still have to say it because inevitably it will happen. Uh, Ripley and Millington both come to the, back to the field. The nose of the ball resting on the 40. They've got to get just to the 29. They've hit the 30 and they've got to get to the 29. Everybody in tight. Wing left. Eye formation in the backfield. And the hand about the running back. He's got the first down going off the right side as he gets down to around the 26 yard line. That was uh, number 24 again. Good run and good blocking on that side. 
Uh, let's see, number 66 for the Tigers is out there on the offensive line. That is Carter Mans. Got to pick out some of these offensive linemen. It's hard to see the numbers. Everybody in tight again for the Tigers. Oh, they've got big Lattimore in there blocking too. So uh, the ball goes off the right side to Crowder. He's pushed out of bounds. Now that should have been. And he's going to be brought play. down. Uh, about a three-yard pickup off the right side. And so it'll be uh, round second down, and it looks like about seven. The clock does stop. 2 0 And, yeah, they've got a man down. I'm not sure. I uh, can't tell if that's a, uh, that's a cramp or not. I see Edler, he's, he's sitting on the bench, so he may be done for the night. So we'll see what's going on with the Ripley Tigers. Let's see, or excuse me, with the injured player for, and it is cramp for Millington. They start grabbing that toe, start pushing it back. You know that's what it is. I don't know the update on that Kelvin Dyer player. Randall Brown is also out there. He is a junior. On Monday, he's foot 388. Looks like number 55, Logan Simpson. Crowder is out there. Uh, Schedule, the rest of the schedule, Morgan, and the basketball Morgan, schedule, Simpson. both the middle school and the high school team. Uh, well, they're kind of wadded up over there, so it's hard to see a lot of numbers. 75. I got him. He's easy to see. So, again, Two minutes, one second to go in this ball game. Ripley trails 14 to seven. Ripley has the ball at second down and seven from the Trojan 23 yard line. And you know, this, if they can get this, get some points on this drive and not leave much time on the clock for Millington, you know, we may be looking at another overtime, but let's get in the end zone first. Never know, Coach Cruz may go for two. Everybody in tight again. Two tight ends, and of course, uh, they brought in the big defensive tackle, Lattimore, and had him blocking on the right side, lined up and tight end. Two tight ends, wing left, and the ball to run back. Oh, and hit. He was tripped up in the backfield, and he was going to lose a yard or two. No blocking at all up front. And they had somebody just came in and hit him just about the ankles. And Ball. He does lose back to the 24-yard line, so it's going to be third down and nine for the Tigers. Tigers definitely got, they definitely have to go forward here, so they've got two downs to make nine yards. He, the running back had a lot of speed. He was heading to the line, to heading to the hole fast, but just got tripped up in the backfield. Again, two tight ends, swing left, and they hand the ball to the running back trying to get outside and the wing back and they catch him. So now it's gonna come down with a minute and 14 seconds left in the ball game. Ripley is gonna be in fourth down and uh, it's gonna be third, no, fourth down and nine. And Ripley calls a timeout. So we're gonna hold it here as this next play will probably be your ball game, at least, at least if Ripley doesn't get it. Coaches will talk it over on both sides. You know, it's been a, it's been a, been a sloppy ball game, but it's been, you know, obviously a close ball game. So it's been a fun one to watch. Uh, but it's always a lot more fun when you win at the end of the game. So it looks like, again, that clock has a couple of lights out. I think it's a minute and 18 seconds left to go in the game. Again, Ripley Trail is 14 to seven. It's going to be fourth down and nine from the 24-yard line of Millington. So it's do or die now here for the Tigers. Give my hats off to the Millington Pro. They've done a good job tonight. All right, here comes Ripley in with the play. It is down at nine. Two wide to the left. Shotgun formation. 
Do or die here. Carter wants to throw. Wants to throw. Get rid of it. And he's, he's hit as the ball is released. Ripley. As the ball will go over to Downs and Millington will get the ball unless they fumble. I don't think we have enough timeouts to stop them on three downs. I don't think we've got more than one, so they can time out and then they can kneel twice, and that'll be it. Unless a fumble happens or, or something unforeseen, if that's the case. And this is a district or region game. So the Tigers. And, a, and they're basically in the Millington is uh, in the victory formation. They'll kneel on the ball. Uh, I misquoted this Ripley will fall to three and four. Ripley takes the timeout, and I think that is the last timeout. Again, we'll hold it here. With a minute four. Have the ball second down and about 15. It's, uh, well, about 17 as they just snap the ball to it deep back and he kneels on it. So Ripley backs against the wall because I don't think they can stop the clock again. Millington probably snapped the ball two more times. We may get them down into fourth down, but I don't know that we can stop the ball before they would have to punt the ball to us. And I would expect that they would punt it. Because I think Edward's still over on the sideline. Hate to see that. You know, the good thing about it is we've got a bye week next week, so uh, hopefully he can get healed up by our next game, and then, of course, we should get uh, Pitts back. And, uh, of course, we're missing our starting center tonight, and we're missing uh, A.J. Barbie, R.J. Barbie. So back in victory formation now. And the, uh, the up backs is going to take it to kneel on. And uh, Ripley can't stop the clock again. So we're down to 56 seconds, and that looks like with one more snap, how the ball game is going to end, barring something unforeseen to happen. So Ripley will fall to Millington tonight, it appears, by the score of 14-17. And Millington just took the first lead of the game on an intercepted pass by the Tigers with just around six or eight minutes to go in the game. Here should be the last snap of the game. Of course, they're milking the clock. So they can go ahead and snap it because uh, we can't stop it again. And so that's it. That's going to be the last play of the game. So here in Millington, Millington is going to walk away with a 14-7 win over the Tigers. And uh, so the Tigers will fall to three and four, and one and two in the uh, in the region. And remember, the Tigers not playing next week as it is a bye week. And then the following week, the Tigers will be at home against Bolton for the homecoming game. So make your plans now. Two weeks from tonight, to be at Tiny Stadium, Jim Fitzhugh Field, Don Paris Press Box, and come out and support the Ripley Tigers for their homecoming. And that's going to do it here from, uh, I'm not sure what the name of the field is, we call it Millington Trojan Field. And so be sure to tune in next Friday night, and we'll see you then. God, good night and God bless.